I want to fuck a priest. Catholic? Yes. A good one? Yes. Looks good in the... Uh... Mm, yes. I understand. Do you really want to fuck the priest or do you want to fuck God? Can you fuck God? Oh, yes. <laughs> While the first season of Fleabag is about crashing, burning and finally forgiving herself, the second season is best described by Fleabag herself. This is a love story. But it isn't a regular love story because for some strange reason, God is in the mix here. While it only seems like a choice the hot priest has to make, the choice between love and God is also Fleabag's own struggle as the show goes on. The relationship between love and God is explored in ways not seen before. And the love here isn't the general love of things that we associate with spirituality. It is unabashedly an erotic, romantic sort of love. In fact, the very first scene of the show establishes all its themes. Fleabag trying to fix herself in the mirror. A man who we don't know yet is the hot priest trying to help her get through to her. Can I do anything? No, thank you. And us, her imaginary friends, watching everything. At this point in her life, Fleabag has us and she has herself. But this is what changes over the course of the season. The background score for the season is haunting choir music, which yet again establishes the theme of God's presence. The first change comes at dinner with her family and the hot priest. Fleabag is about to point out how nobody has asked her a question yet. When No one's asked me a question in 45 minutes. So what do you do? This is the first of many interruptions her relationship with us will see in the presence of the hot priest. At the end of an eventful dinner, the hot priest tells Fleabag... If you ever need someone to talk to, uh, I'll be there. I'm always there. He walks away in an out-of-focus shot. This shot makes him look like a spirit fading into the wind and establishes him as the representation of God. Fleabag doesn't know yet how her life is about to be changed with the appearance of God. Fleabag is pulled into the religious environment of a church because of her lust for the hot priest, where she is bothered by all the biblical imagery. The images of Jesus' suffering represent the suffering of the hot priest as we'll see later in the show. The image of a woman kneeling before Jesus will also be significant at a later point. Fleabag's reaction to religious objects is either absolute repulsion or erotic desire. This also happens to be her reaction to love itself. She is afraid of it, but she also craves it. The hot priest too messes up around Fleabag. They are both attracted to the disaster they create together. Fleabag is suddenly noticing the beauty of birds and trees with choir music playing in the background. For once, we are seeing her lost in something else besides us. Fleabag's encounter with the therapist is iconic as every issue of her life is brought up here. While she considers us, the audience, a friend that is always there. <laughs> they're always there. They're, they're always there. She's still tormented with guilt for betraying her own friend, Boo, and causing her death. Now think about what this means for a second. In most ways, Fleabag has control of her life now. But in many ways, how others treat her and what happens to her really all depends on God, whether or not she believes in one. So there's a need to gain control over a higher power, but there's a reason for it that we will come to later. Fleabag is still hearing a pleasant choir when she looks at the priest. These are the first signs of her falling in love. And while she tries to dismiss her feelings as lust, Yes, father. Yes, father. Things are about to change for her. Fleabag's meeting with Belinda is an important moment in the show because Belinda represents an older Fleabag. That's why it's important that Belinda tells her this. And you? 33. Oh, well, don't worry, it does get better. You promise? I promise. Belinda mentions how women have pain built in, but men have to seek it out. And so they invent gods and demons. This statement refers to the hot priest, whose own lifestyle brings him a lot of pain as he has to give up a lot, including romantic love, in the service of God. Belinda also reminds Fleabag not to give up on people. People are all we've got. This is also a way of telling Fleabag to not give up on love. The priest has the same problem. Love seems to have been chasing him all along in the form of foxes while he runs from them. I woke up just feeling a bit weird, like there might be a fox about. And a fox <laughs> was sitting underneath my window looking at me like this. 
pointing at me like you. We're watching you. We're having you. That's why this line by Fleabag <laughs> makes sense. Lucky God got there first. Indeed, the hot priest found God before love could find him. But in the middle of the conversation, Fleabag's world changes. What was that? What? Where did you, where did you just go? The priest notices Fleabag disappearing into her world, the world that only she and the audience inhabit. This is because the priest notices her and cares for her more than anyone else. Her inner world now stands naked before him. This is also a way of showing God's control over the one thing that Fleabag thought belonged to her alone. This is the point where Fleabag falters. As she falls deeper in love with the priest, the boundary she keeps between the real world and her inner world with the audience begins to disintegrate. It's neck. And you never felt them go somewhere. No, they were already gone. His beautiful neck. What? While the priest tries to introduce spirituality into Fleabag's life through the Quaker meeting, it's very intense. It's very quiet. It's very very erotic. Fleabag can't stop wondering what's he thinking. She feels provoked to be the object of his thoughts and desires and speaks. I sometimes worry that I wouldn't be such a feminist if I had bigger tits. The priest then tells her, "Well, it's good you felt something." Is it? Something moved you. <laughs> and while the priest is talking about a spiritual experience, Fleabag was only moved by a hunger for attention from the one she loves. I was thinking about how peaceful I felt, and then for some reason I was thinking about your tits, which kind of ruined it. <laughs> oh, my tits ruined your peace. Yeah. Fleabag is again interrupting the religious life of the priest as he falls in love with her. Even though the priest is seeing right through Fleabag at this point, she's too scared to open up about Boo, the one who torments her. She tries to escape with the audience again, but this time the priest penetrates the space between us and Fleabag and unnervingly looks into the camera. Fleabag can no longer escape her intimacy with him. Through a flashback of Fleabag's mother's funeral, we come to understand the magnitude of love she is capable of. With all the love I have for her, I don't know where to put it now. This love is threatening to come out for the priest, leaving Fleabag bewildered and looking for refuge at the one place she doesn't believe in, the church. While for the first time Fleabag has come looking for God, she finds the priest, the one she loves and the one who represents God. As Fleabag confesses to the priest, she says the same thing she said to the therapist. Can you just tell me what to do? So just tell me what to do. She has opened up to both love and God, and while her therapist refused to give her an answer, the priest tells her what to do. Kneel. This imagery reminds us of the paintings that Fleabag once mocked. She is the helpless woman at God's feet now, looking for love, but God stops them again. Fleabag tries to go back to her old ways to take her mind off the priest, but he shows up at her door. What they couldn't do at God's house gets done at Fleabag's house. And unlike every other time Fleabag has had sex, she turns us away this time. The first time she shuns the comfort of her inner world for a piece of reality. Now this whole mess of God and love and Fleabag in the middle of it makes us wonder, what was the point of it all? I think you know how to love better than any of us. That's why you find it all so painful. And that is exactly what Fleabag has had to face this entire time, the pain that comes with love. The hot priest sums up this theme beautifully in his speech, which is like a love letter to Fleabag. And love isn't something that weak people do. By the end when the priest chooses God, Fleabag has already met God and the love that he represents through the priest. She can now accept the love that appeared for her briefly like an appearance from God himself and live her life with love for her own self. And so she leaves us behind to go out into the world on her own, to fall in love again and to love herself again. The eroticism of religion in the show is just a way of showing us Fleabag's relationship with God, irrespective of whether he exists. What she wanted from him was power and control, but what he gave her was the opposite. Vulnerability, pain, and the total loss of control even of her inner world. But she got what she needed, the courage to love again. And that's why Fleabag season 2 is a love story. 
between love and god he went that way 